Hello everyone. Uh, recently, I got a chance to do a beta test on a new uh, MyCom training kit. I think it's gonna come out like summer 2015. Pricing, I don't know yet. But let's have a look uh, at what it can do. So we I get into more detailed description of the uh, this forthcoming kit and just show you how to apply to a multi uh, input multi output application. I'll be using a variable resistor or a potential meter, seven segment LED, some uh, older NR sensor and one uh, XL three twenty. So my con kit come a little nice box like this. Essentially, the main part uh, it have a uh, two lipo battery. 2XL320, 3 all NIR sensor and the cables. It comes with a CM904C with the uh, header mounted already. Also come with a little breadboard. It has about over a handful, 12, 15 of these uh, jumper cable. It have a little uh, push button switch. Uh, this is a uh, variable meter here or the variable resistor here it has a seven segment LED it has one uh, red LED it has a pair of matching uh, emitting and now on emitting LED here and then a dark one for the receiver and then finally you maybe you can see it right here is a little microphone then it has some resistors, it's about, I think, 10, 100 ohm resistor, and then uh, two 10K ohm. It also come with a few of uh, auto part. You see the, uh, the, uh, the wheel and the tires, the rivets, and some plate. So you can put pretty much like a little wheel, a uh, carbot, two wheels if you want to. The uh, Battery crater come with a type, uh, I guess type C, where you can use it and also charge it. But they always recommend to charge the battery without being hooked to the uh, CM904C. If not, uh, you may just fry your controllers. So the way I got it set up, I have a breadboard. You can see that I had to uh, get some extra uh, seven LED. Uh, I mean, uh, seven extra jumper cable. So I got my seven segments set up. I go into detail how it's hooked up to the uh, analog uh, output. The variable resistor, I use it as an input to it. NIR sensor, I put it on uh, port number four here. And then I have an XL320 just hook up to the uh, TTL port as usual. Let's look at the sketch that I made. Oh, as usual, as you know, I'm going to define your, uh, I use the auto.h <coughs> for the uh, NR sensor. So you define your uh, device, I auto. I'm using uh, serial one because everything is uh, situated on the controller card itself. Uh, my XL dynamic so ID one. Control mode is address eleven. Goal speed address thirty two. I initialize my various value here. Parameters. In the setup, I set up uh, the uh, each of the uh, Analog input, well, analog pin and output. I use A0, A7, A2, A8, A4, A5, and A6. Uh, each of them correspond to the seven segment of the uh, seven segment LED. <laughs> Why do I jump around? Because uh, somehow A1 and my A3 on my neural cord just gave out on me. They first started out working, but then somehow they die. I don't know what I did or didn't do right. <laughs> And then I have my uh, input, the potentiometer, I go through uh, A9. So in the setup, of course, because you're using the uh, NR sensor, you better begin the device. 
I also set up the DXL uh, protocol two to one megabit within the controller. And I finally used uh, a right byte to set it up to wheel mode. In the loop itself, first I read in from A9, of course, parameter VR values. Then I also eat from the uh, infrared sensor, the auto infrared sensor, and save it in an IR value. And then because the display on the LED, uh, seven segment LED can only go from zero to nine the way I designed it. So I scale the VR value to its VR max and then just multiply back display max, which is nine plus 0.1 just to round it up essentially. Save that in display value. I also scale the uh, VR reading value to the maximum multiplied by motor max, which uh, happened to be 1023. So I said, I use that to scale so called my parameter motor threshold to a value between 0 and 1023. And then the logic is fairly simple. If the NIR reading from the NIR sensor is less than this threshold, which is actually set up by the uh, variable. Uh, potentiometer. If it's less than that, go ahead and whatever that value is set to the motor speed. So that means the smaller the NIR value, the smaller the speed, the bigger the NIR value, the bigger the speed. Else, when it goes higher than the motor threshold, uh, just turn the servo off. And then I have a big group of uh, if else else if structure to find out uh, if uh, display zero and then display zero, if it's one, display one, and so on. Eventually, you had display nine. If something goes wrong, well, just display zero. And then I have a serial USB print just to print it out on a COM port like that, um, 33 here, uh, so that I can see what's going on. And then finally, I actually set the goal speed to auto speed. And then delay 100, and then it goes through uh, its main loop again. Uh, I had to write some uh, subroutine like display zero. It's just a matter of uh, essentially turn which segment to low to turn them on, the LED on. Uh, just standard technique there, like with zero, essentially learn practically everything on except for G, segment G here. So everything else go low, so they turn it on and so on. One, you only turn on five and six, A7, high five and A6, turn them on. That they correspond to the segment B and C here on this side, so that correspond to one and so forth. All right, so let's look at how it works then. Uh, this is the serial COM port here being displayed right now. Let's see, let's move this on a little bit side. So you see, right now I have the potentiometer, right now it's set up to zero. So let me see. Okay, you turn on, let me turn on a little bit. You can see it's reading one now. Also, you can look at the uh, USB output to see how it varies. So I'm going to increase it. You see display value now too. So it's like about five now. Right now, you see the actual NIR reading is 23. Well, the threshold is that, but it's kind of low. Let's see if it's working. Here we go. You see, because, <laughs> okay, here we go. So the threshold is about 531. The NIR is 260 or 300, so it's smaller than the threshold, so it's set up the speed to that. And then as I approach, you see that the NIR value is getting bigger. The speed also, but then I go down too low. The NIR value bigger than the threshold, the speed goes up to zero again. So, Go full speed. I had to dial it so it show up nine now. See now, and now I have a 360. So I speed up 700. You can see that the motor threshold is that housing, like you see something. And go up, and then it go too low, and then it turned off. Go back up again, and turning. Well, I'll be slowing down. We'll see it. <clears throat> so, 
So essentially, just something for uh, if you uh, want to learn a little bit of electronic, you have a breadboard to fan. Um, so it seems to be working. <laughs>